Have you watched Tiger King yet? Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction series. It's up, Corbin. I'm Rick. And he follows on Instagram and Twitter. Instagram. For more juicy content. Twitter. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Follow the official Ring the bell for the notification squad. Bang! It's so juicy. I messed up my hair with my banging. Dang. Hey, don't you hate when you do that? When you bang too hard and your hair gets messed up? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. <gasps> Hi. Uh, and today we are doing a movie review, our first in quarantine, and what better movie to do in quarantine than a film about another pandemic? <laughs> I, <coughs> I thought it was fitting. Uh, wait, it, it actually is, because I think the number one film in the world right now is, um, Contagion, that film that came yeah, out. That does. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, more people have watched Contagion now than any other film, or rented it, or streamed it. That is the most yeah. popular film right now. Uh, yeah, there was a. We went into a, a the day, uh, no, the week before. Like we had just gotten back from India, mm -hmm. so that was that Friday. That Sunday, we had gone to dinner and we went into a Barnes and Noble, and there was an entire section. It was fantastic. An entire table dedicated to movies uh and and books just about pandemics it's it's i think it's just human nature like it, it's happening like so if like a, a tornado was happening i'd probably want to watch twister honestly like <laughs> <laughs> if, if a hurricane happens you want to watch some state i and also it's just fun to see the world well end. well and let's let's be honest i mean everybody knows that if you want to get crucial critical survival information for the current pandemic what better place to go to than Matt movies Damon. and books? Matt Damon. I mean, come on. Exactly. <laughs> Matt Damon knows everything. It's uh, true. So we watched Virus, the and is our second Malalium film that we've ever yes. seen. Uh, the first being Combology Nights, and now uh, Virus. Uh, it both came out in 2019. Uh, we remember. Do you remember watching the uh, trailer for this one? I do very we watched, much. I, we watched it with, I remember liking it. We watched it with Lexi. Um, yes. And uh, I remember liking it a lot. And so I'll read the synopsis real quick. It's a uh, a real life account of the deadly nip, 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 Nipah? Nipah virus? Sure, why not? Uh, outbreak in uh, Kerala. And the courageous fight to put, put on by several individuals which helped contain the epidemic. And thank goodness this was not the epidemic that spread the globe because. No freaking joke. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. they this one was obviously covid is its own thing uh it's right. very very contagious but the uh the death rate of the one in the film was like i think all but two died or something like yeah, that yeah uh, the the mortality rate of this particular virus if i'm not mistaken was something ex insane like 75 to 80 percent of all people who got it died holy cow yeah and died <laughs> fast like in a matter of days yeah and this was obviously yeah. a very ensemble piece uh which yes I, I, is that a normal thing in malala because uh combology nights was a very ensemble this was i think even more of an ensemble piece uh, it sure seems to be that way um uh, i don't know if that's uh, i don't know if that's the case for all of the films but the, the two we've seen were definitively ensemble but yeah we really like to do spoiler reviews so just go see it uh and then come back uh, if you want, uh, yeah, it's just... we'll tell you that much at, uh, out the gate without spoiling anything. It's worth watching. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, one of my favorite things about it, just like uh, Kumbalaji Nights, was um, the most, almost all of the acting. There was one that I, I didn't like at all. Um, we could talk about that later. Um, but most of the acting was all so natural and very well done it was no heightened uh nobody was like going over the top or anything like that with the exception of one yep. person um <laughs> but that and i think that's pretty accurate from what we've been told and what we saw in combology nights is that this industry really likes realism yes um uh, as opposed to some like in especially in bollywood sometimes not all the time but sometimes they get really heightened and over the top with uh, mm -hmm. the emotion of it all um, mm -hmm. And so I, I really, really appreciate that. I really, I, I enjoyed. Um, did you enjoy the? Oh, we'll talk about the acting. Let's talk about it. Talk about yeah, the acting. I was very, really pleased. It, it wasn't. Um, you know, I don't. It's not. This is 
not fair to say necessarily. I was going to say it's not as good as uh, Cumberlandji Nights. Yeah, it's not. But but, but uh, not many films are. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but nope. my favorite thing about it, from, right from the get go, it's my favorite thing about the film, is is the believability and groundedness of everybody in in it. And it's one of the, especially for smaller roles. I mean, one of the things I've mentioned this before. I, I pay really close attention, as I know you do, to all actors, but I'm especially interested in people who have little roles or even doing background work because the temptation when you're doing a small thing is to perform and have people like you and this could be my break. And yeah. I, I didn't see that anywhere. I felt like everybody was pretty grounded and pretty believable. Was, and uh, go ahead. It, it, especially um, – one of the hardest things to do is to be believable when you're sick. Yep. Um, that's not an easy thing to do. No, because... And I believed, I believed everybody that was sick. Yeah, it, it is a hard thing to do because a lot of people... Because most people have never had these illnesses or Correct. ever had a seizure or ever had... And so it's not like a normal thing people just naturally do. It's right. A, it's almost an out-of-body experience that just kind of happens to you. And so it's hard, yep. it's hard to emulate. Um, yeah. and so I, I agree that I thought everybody in this did really, really, really well. And we could talk about somebody that we know from Kumbhala Nights that I thought did phenomenal in this. Yeah. That it I'm, was so I'm, fun to watch him again. I'm re- it was really fun. Cause I, I actually, I don't even know if I knew he was in it. Maybe I forgot. Um, but the one I didn't like, there was one, she was the one that kept thinking it was a terrorist attack. Oh yeah. She was wearing, um, I think she was wearing red. I, I don't know who specifically it was, uh, but she was one. You know, yeah, she she gave me she gave me uh, sacred games vibes of the woman at the end who was doing the password. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she did, yeah, a hundred percent. That's exactly who this. So this was her younger, and then she got older, and then screwed everything right. up in sacred games. Exactly, uh, the same character, same character. Uh, uh, but I, yeah, her, her, that was the one actor I, me and my wife watched this with me. She, we just, she actually turned to me when I even before I said she's like she's not good. She's she's hard mm. to watch. <laughs> I said, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I don't know how she is in others. Maybe she's really maybe, but every, yeah, and I. Outside of her, though, since she wasn't obviously central, she was a very small supporting character, so that was easy to forgive. But yeah, I'm looking, everyone I'm else looking was up. phenomenal, especially uh, when uh, our, our friend came in. What's his name? Um, 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 I'm looking it, it up here. Is it Subin? Um, yes. Uh, su- wait, no. Yes, yeah. Is it? It's, uh, yeah, Subin Shahir? Subin Shahir. Uh, yes, when, yes. When he came in, I was like, yes, because actually the, the one gripe uh, I have with the film really is that the pacing, especially in the middle, was, I think, way too slow. Yeah, I, that is the only um, – and I didn't dislike that lady as much as I think you and Stephanie did. Yeah, yeah, I didn't um, like her at all. Uh, but, but I would say, yeah, the um, – it flattened out a little bit pacing wise in the middle of the film. In the middle. So like the first fourth yeah. was like really good and it was really gripping and then they kind of kept on like the trying to figure it out but almost too long. It's one of the drawbacks. It really is so so hard to take especially a film like this. That's based on a true know, true events. Yeah. It's based on true events. And you're really banking on the tension. It's really hard to maintain that kind of tension for two and a half hours. And it you've is. got to make a two and a half hour film because in India you're expected to have the intermission. So uh, really difficult well, I, to maintain I, a nice pace. I don't know why they had to, though, because I, especially Malalium, because um, I don't think, I think Kumbhala Genetics was two hours. Um, I think the, the film with the, the Bulls. That, that came out this past year too, the Jakku or something like that. Uh-huh, the um, one with, with the trailer, everything takes place at night? Yeah, it's I think like an hour 45. Um, and so that industry huh. is not, I, I don't know if they were just trying to cram all the information in there and they just, that's they felt all this was essential, but it was the middle parts that, it wasn't bad, it wasn't like the acting was bad or like the, the, the directing was bad or anything was bad, it no. was just the pacing was way too long for the type of film that you were trying to go for. Like, you know, and it really it could have been as simple. I mean, there's so many factors that can contribute to that. It really could have been something as simple as um, both the director and the editor 
did, didn't have the time they needed based on what the producers wanted for the release of the film. Yeah. And so what they had wasn't what they wanted. And they may very well themselves say, yeah, the pacing on this was slower because we really didn't get to take the time to edit it down the way we wanted to. So we just left it intact because we wanted to get the release done. Yeah, but I, I agree. That's that's really my only complaint with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. that and the, the actress is uh, uh, really the only things that I had a problem with was the pacing. Um, and it wasn't like it got bad in the middle. It was just like, okay, I think you've hashed this out. I think we can move on. Uh, right, I try to, right. Try to speed this because it's a... In pandemic movies, they're usually like you, the pacing usually goes fast to keep it's you yeah. to keep you engaged in pandemic movies. And, and yep. I think what I heard, I could be wrong. You can correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Um, this was the first almost outbreak pandemic movie in Indians history. I think really, I believe oh. so. I could be wrong. You can correct me, but I believe that's what I heard. But what I can say is like the first fourth I really liked, and then it went slow. But right when um, Subin came in. It picked right back up, and I was I was yeah. r- really interested again uh, when Me he too. came back. And I think it's the last hour of the film. Um, he really one brought obviously the acting uh, really high. I like him a lot. I'd like to explore him even more. I think I got him even more of an appreciation because I liked him in in Kumbalaji Nights, mm-hmm. um, but I think um, Fahad Fasil kind of stole the show for me, and so he almost got overshadowed. Um, mm. uh, a little bit uh, just because of how great Faha Fazel in that character was but yeah. it, he really made me appreciate the, his performance in that and in this so much because I think he did a really really good job especially when he was um, the nurse told him that his mom hasn't touched the money and then he mm-hmm. started crying mm-hmm. I thought that was actually a really really good scene uh, I did for too. him yeah. uh, he I, does of the two things we've seen him do I was very much impressed obviously with him and Cumberlandy Nights, and he he just seems to be a guy who, at least in these two things, one of the best attributes we can say about an actor is they don't ever seem to have any false moments ever. Everything seems justified. Yeah, uh, everything seems believable, uh, which is is bespeaks the fact that the choices they make uh, are well written. Because uh, as you know, there's no amount of good acting that can make up for bad writing. It's true. And uh, <laughs> uh, I I. I I, the, you're absolutely right on. If you're doing a pandemic film, one of the things that keeps you engaged is this sense of things being out of control. And the best way that you can convey that sense Speed of being out of control is the pace, where you feel like uh, the, 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 everything happening is happening at a pace that they cannot keep up with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so and I so agree. That's, that's, that's those are the only two gripes. But um, what did you think of the score? I, you read my mind. That was the next thing I wanted to talk about was I felt the score – was complimentary at every level. Yeah, um, I actually really I enjoyed the score. I thought it was actually really, me too. really good. Thought it was a great score. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed a lot of the moments, and then they were not too heightened in, in emotional moments to make it seem like they were trying to get you to go somewhere. Um, yeah, and so, it, but and then also sometimes you just didn't notice, and, and it, yeah, it was really good that way. Um, as as was the cinematography, because that uh, this is a film that um, if if I were if I were directing it, I would want a cinematographer and I would ta- talk with my cinematographer about the fact that w- this really needs to be, um, we need to back off on our desire to make this look artistically beautiful and we need to make it almost feel like a documentary. We need it to feel really grounded and, and, and forego our sense of aesthetic for the sense of just be real and make people feel like they're a fly on the wall. Yeah. So, so there, I, but there were some beautiful, like in terms of cinematography shots, there were, like the one, one at the end, I think there was a girl wearing a, uh, I don't know if it's called a hijab, forgive me if I'm wrong, she was wearing something around her head. Yeah, that, if, the, if, that, that a Muslim woman would wear? Uh, but it was orange. So, I don't think the color is a necessary matter. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, and it is hijab. hijab but my yeah. favorite shots was um, she was wearing the orange hijab, but then she was standing in front of a orange background. I don't know if you remember the shot. And it was just a beautiful, just yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> orange on orange on orange, and I, I like it a lot. And I was like, that's the cinematographer saw that, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. They just got they get <laughs> they get excited when they can see those really pretty shots. Um, but another actor that I thought did really well was one of the main doctors. What is his? Um, I'm trying. To, was it? I'm trying to see the guys here. Uh, while you're while you're looking at that, 
one of the things I don't know if this is the case, but one of the things that was really intriguing to me was the way the emergency room was functioning compared to what we're accustomed to seeing in an American emergency room. Yeah, I was bothered by a lot of that. Not by what they did in the film, but just by the fact that everybody was out there at the same time. Especially yeah. especially now, obviously, because, you know, it's like, get away! Yeah, there's no partitions between people. Very, uh, nobody, a lot of folks aren't wearing masks and gloves. and Yeah, that, that, that bothered me on an inner level, just in terms of the... Uh, how much I don't like being around people in general and touching people, <laughs> much less when every like in hospitals I get even more heightened. I just don't I'm like just stay away from me. <laughs> You're gross. Hey, do you like to watch like uh, do you like watching surgeries? No. Ah, uh, okay. I can't, I can't actually. It's, really? It, it grosses me. Yeah. Out. Oh wow, I love yeah, surgeries, no. man. I, I, I like. I can't even well, watch Doctor Pimple Popper. I can't even. I can't do that. Really? Yeah. Like I, we'll we'll be watching. Uh, oftentimes, I've been eating dinner and have watched Grey's Anatomy, and there's a really cool shot of some surgical procedure, and I'm leaning forward. I'm like, ooh, yeah, let's. Yeah, I get like even when like um, like they try to do like stitches in films or, or TV yeah. shows. Yeah. It, it you know, like ah. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know, it, it <laughs> It bothers me. Um, yeah, but yeah. So I would definitely. Who was the, did, did you figure out the actor? You yeah, I, th- I think it was. I think it was As- Asif Ali, I believe. Is he was okay. one of the main young actors, uh, young doctors uh, that we, you were introduced in the beginning. Yeah, I thought, uh, I thought he did a really, really good job. I also thought the doctor who couldn't go home to his family but really wanted to, and then bought the backpack yeah. at the end. Absolutely agree. I thought I think his name is totally jo- believable. Joju George, I believe is his name. Yep. He did really, uh, really well. Um, I liked him a lot, uh, and I thought it, the the character they fleshed out for him was you, you you really felt for the fact that he couldn't go home to his family. Uh, yeah, and it was it, and he had a son, and so that probably heightened it for me. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> don't do that. Um, but th- I think this film just enforces that. Um, just don't uh, don't touch people. Uh... <laughs> well, also really... stop touching and eating bats. Like, what is wrong with the world? That seems to be the start <laughs> of every pandemic movie or pandemic in terms of the COVID nineteen. <laughs> it, it's true. They've been. Um... They're not. They're one. They're probably not even that tasty. They don't have a lot of meat on them. So no. And, and two, they're they're like rats. They carry a bunch of disease. And so it's just true. stop eating them. We don't eat rats. <laughs> yeah, we we don't. And you don't need to touch them. I I love bats. It's not a bat's fault. That they oh, no, I, to yeah, be I, carriers I like bats of too. things, but if I found like in the film when the guy when he finds the bat on the ground, even with gloved hands, I'm not messing with a bat. Yeah, the only way I would ever touch or hold a bat is if I'm with a wildlife expert hmm. who has a bat and is handing it to me and is letting me know everything's good and everything's clean and everything's alright. I right. was wondering about the end though because he was wearing gloves the bat didn't bite him No, but it, whatever it, it could have gone just strictly from the bat to the gloves And then he touched his face or something? Yeah, it could have gone straight out of either urine from the bat, feces from the well, bat, I know, saliva I know they, from the bat. I know they said the saliva during mating season. And saliva, that's, yes. That's, that's what it was. But I was like, okay, did he rub his glove all over his face? Well, and the other thing that this also, reminded me people of. people need to wash your hands. A lot of the yeah, people yeah. that were infected could have been healed <laughs> if they would have washed their hands. Wash like their our hands. favorite actor in this. The, <laughs> he was yeah. just touching stuff, rubbing everything, and then he didn't wash his hands. <laughs> Wash your yeah. hands. Wash your hands. But it it did. We said this at the outset. It it uh, and before one last thought. Before my last thought is uh, I thought as much as I didn't. Um, th- there wasn't the aesthetic beauty of some of the cinematography. I thought that was intentional and I appreciated it. And even though the pacing was off, I really felt that Ashika Boo, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, which one? Um, uh, the director. Oh yes, yes. Um, did did a really good job and clearly cared about this because um, he's also listed as producer. 
Um, gotcha. So, you know, he put his money where his mouth is on the project, and I thought he did a, a, a – and it also bespeaks always when you've got an ensemble piece together, then the director with the casting director did a very good job of putting together actors that do a good job. So hats off to him for a, a very good directing yeah, job. Yeah, I liked all like – every I, like I said, I had no problem with any of the directing except for the pacing, and so that, right. that's between the director and the editor and the – and everything like that. So that's that would be my only gripe with the film, uh, outside of that one actress that I, I just didn't like at all. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'd say definitely go watch this film, especially if you're in the mood for a pandemic movie, like I have I have been. Uh, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> the, the moment, the moment we went into the stay at home, Corbin messages me and he says, "Let's watch Virus." <laughs> <laughs> Which it really is. I mean, I've said this over and over again. As serious as the situation is, guys, we are in a really blessed situation compared to what this could be because we've had a lot of other pandemics on the planet, this one included, that have been much worse. In terms of death rate. In terms of, uh, yes. in terms of contagion, this is actually probably one of the worst. because One like, of the worst. Just because it, it apparently easily transmits super easy. Uh, yep. But thankfully, so. the death rate seems to be not as high as, especially some of the past pandemics, uh, especially for the broad of uh, society. It, it's not good for people with uh, underlying conditions, obviously, though, uh, yeah. at all. But yes, yeah. once again, wash your hands, stop eating bats. Uh, <laughs> those would be the main and things. And pandolins. <laughs> Don't eat those pandolins either. Yes. You know, uh, but that's... that's... <laughs> let us know what... Uh, what uh, the next Malolium film we should watch. I want to explore the Malolium because I like the... I, um, my lot. favorite part about films is the acting, of course, just because I'm an actor, so I'm, I'm almost selfish that way. Um, but I, I love the natural style that I'm seeing from the Malolium film industry. And so, I agree. Uh, let us know what one we should watch next. Also, possibly, the next review, I would like to... If you would like us to, let us know if you would. To like us to do it live... Not live as in we watch it and you are watching us watch it. That will no. give us a copyright strike. Uh, but in terms of we'll do a live video. We'll talk about it. And so it. you can comment while we're doing the review. And so let us know what film you'd like us to do that with down below. Stay safe and uh, stop eating bats. Bye!